My name's Charles Nicklin, and I was in the very final episode of Are You Being Served, playing the TV director. I got involved. Um, I'd just come back from living in, in, the, um, in America, and um, I got contacted by, because I was in equity and spotlight, I got contacted by uh, Robin Carr, who um, was a producer and had done a lot of Perry and Croft and various other stuff. And um, he called me in for a, a casting, which was fantastic. And uh, I, I knew Robin from um, when I was at um, drama college. So, um, yeah, Robin Carr called me and I knew Robin. Um, he was a year above me at drama school. And uh, we went to a small drama school in Coventry, which was a bit of a, a prototype for the, um, what you call the performing art schools that you get today. And it was a fantastic uh, little drama school that um, uh, it was one of very few outside of London. And uh, Robin was in the year above me. And, um, and I'd gone off and become, after college, I'd gone off and become an actor. And Robin had got into um, television and was working behind the scenes as a production manager, I think. And then he became a producer. I'm not quite sure how his career went, but he was a great, a great chap. And um, he was um, he was great because he he'd called other people in and other people from college had worked. And yeah, Robin was a really um, generous, good person who, who gave a lot of people that he, he knew needed uh, jobs and he was great. So yeah, much appreciated from Robin Carr. <clears throat> I didn't know, uh, I'd been living in America. So um, uh, a lot of the, the Perry and Croft stuff had become, I did know Dad's Army and I knew most of the shows, um, but I hadn't, obviously been watching lots of them regularly because I was living abroad. So um, I didn't know are you being say, uh, are you being served that well? Um, um, and um, so um, the I did, so I had no idea it was the last one. I, I didn't know that is what I'm trying to say. You know, I, I turned up and um, I knew the faces uh, and I knew that I knew the TV series quite well, but um, I didn't realize that it was coming to an end and all of that. So, um, and it was uh, quite a wacky one. It was uh, all set around um, um, them appearing on TV and the whole production going crazy and falling apart. And, um, and, uh, and Mike Berry sang uh, a song in it and, um, uh, and it was uh, yeah, it was quite an experience. Yeah, I mean, it, it was. Um, I have to say, it was a great, a really great experience because there were so many people in it who um, I'd known uh, and who were household names, and um, uh, for some reason, I, I, I can't remember exactly, it's a long time ago, but I did spend quite a few days in the rehearsal um, studios, uh, which was really good fun. And, um, you know, it was fantastic to, to work with um, Molly and Arthur and, you know, all of the, the regulars. Um, and um, they were very welcoming and it was great. And I was very much appreciated. I mean, one of the great things when you work on those sorts of shows is actually quite difficult when you've only got a small part and you come in briefly where they've been doing it for weeks and weeks and months and months and years and years. And you've got to come in and try to, you know, be on the spot and, and, and nail everything very quickly. Um, and so it was nice to go in and get some rehearsal and um, and feel comfortable about it because obviously it, it went out um, with a live audience. So, um, and I was used to the theatre. So the way of working was quite good for me. And I'd been working in film where you literally get hardly any rehearsal 
you turn up for the day, you do your bit and you're gone. Um, whereas um, this was quite nice because um, we had the rehearsal time. You know, I could sit in the, I can't remember what it was, but there was like a green room or a cafeteria or something at the rehearsal studios. And I remember sitting there with Molly talking about Jimmy Clitheroe and all these things that she'd done in the past and, and John Inman, and they were all very, very friendly. And the girl that um, played my sidekick in the TV studio was a girl called Susie Aitchison. And um, it was quite interesting to talk to her because she was the daughter of June Whitfield, who again is a household name. And um, obviously she was trying to make her way as an actress and we, we talked a lot. And, um, and then in rehearsals, we also had um, 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 Nick Ross, who is the TV um, new, he was a news person, a journalist, I suppose you'd call him. Uh, news reader um, and was famous for Crime Watch eventually. Um, and um, he was very friendly. And it was nice to have time to sort of sit and talk because I, I can't remember how many days I did, but it was definitely more than one day. Uh, there was more than, you know, I didn't just go in. So I would do the rehearsals and then go back in for some more rehearsals. And so I must have done two or three days, I think. And then there was the day of the filming where you sit around a lot waiting to do it. And that was quite an experience. So yeah, in, 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 it was one of those things that I wish I could have done more of them. They, they're, a, um, they're a format that uh, a lot of actors understand because if you come from a theatre background, you, you very much enjoy rehearsing and then performing and you've got a live audience. So it's very, you know, it's very fulfilling, and I and I think one of the great things when you um, when you become a regular on a series like that is it gives you time to relax and you feel you feel very much part of the the whole thing, and it it gives you more confidence. Yes, you're right. The um, the strange thing was because it was about a live. Um, TV show, the, 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 so the the whole program worked, the whole of the episode worked towards the fact that they were going to a studio to perform this song live on some live TV show. So um, I played the TV TV director, so I had to actually film my part in the studio that. Um, the, the, the room where the vision mixers and the directors actually sit when you're actually making the, the show. So, yeah, I mean, once the, um, once the main bit of filming was done, um, then um, we went up into the, into the gallery, as they call it, and, and shot my sequences with Sus Susie. I suppose I liked all of them, but and, and Arthur was very friendly. Everyone was very friendly. Um, but I suppose for me, the one that um, I kind of was a little bit in awe of was um, Molly Sugden. So Molly Sugden was, you know, somebody that I was incredibly impressed with. And Wendy Richards was, was an interesting person because she she was one of those actresses that never really stopped working. And so it was absolutely amazing to see how relaxed she was. Um, you know, as I said, I'd come from a film background where, you know, you, you're called in, you do your bit and, you know, everything stops. Whereas um, these guys are used to working on television where you rehearse and you chat and you talk. And Wendy Richards is sitting there doing the crossword and every day she does the crossword and everybody chips in. And um, so it was, um, it was an interesting experience. But yeah, Molly Sugden was the, for me, the standout person to meet because I'd, I'd followed her from a young child. She was, she was in things like I said, she was in things when I was um, a young child washing. I think she was in Jimmy Clitheroe and she was in The Clitheroe Kid. 
and um, and then she came through and she was on did all these TV shows. So, you know, and she was she was just a normal person. You know, she <laughs> all of the all of that stuff that was behind the writing was not Molly Sugden. She, although she was very funny, she was a funny person. There's two things that I'll share with you that are um, um, quite interesting. And that is that um, in, in the series, um, the thing that goes wrong is um, they've, they've got a, a, a recording and they want to play the recording and uh, they've recorded it at the wrong speed. So it, it comes across all funny looking and um, of course, in those days, you know, we didn't have the VHSs and all of that stuff. And um, um, well, in fact, they were probably just coming in and they were starting to become known. But, you know, video technology was, was not well known to everybody. So I hadn't a clue what they were talking about. So you had to say all these lines that you didn't understand. Um, but, but obviously then a few years later, you, you, it's second nature, you know, all, all about those things. The, um, the other thing that is, a, not so much about being in the show, but, um, um, eventually I, I quit working as an actor and I went behind the camera and became a producer director myself. And this took me all across Europe, working with people from Germany and, Italy and all across Europe, and and sometimes in America, actually, I think it even happened in America. And I, I'd have these people phone me up and say, Charles, I've seen you in our being, you are, are you being served? You are in our being, <laughs> you are in, are you being served? It's you. <laughs> and all these people, it's just amazing how people see these small parts that I had and saw me in it and would call me up. This is years later, years later, and, um, and recognised me from it, and because they're fans of British comedies. No, I never got asked to do any more. Um, <laughs> I, I think things changed after the, once the show ended. They did do some other shows, but um, number one, I'm not sure whether Robin was involved with them. And number two, um, um, it kind of was becoming the end of the era, I think. So the, the connections weren't made anymore. And anyway, um, by about 87, around there, I decided to go behind the camera anyway. So, you know, I wasn't available. So... Um, you know, I went off and did some theatre for a while and and uh, once I'd done uh, a few um, tours in, uh, of theatre, I decided I wanted to do something different anyway. So, um, no, I never did. And I, I, did, I did a few phone calls with Robin over the years and we talked about what he was doing and he was doing different things and I was doing different things. I think he was doing quite a lot in this corporate sector. So, yeah, I, we all moved on. Okay. Um, I, ha I haven't got any more questions, uh, Charles. I just want to say uh, thank you very much for the podcast interview. It's been really interesting. Thank you. Yeah, all right. Well, hopefully it goes well for you. <laughs> Hope I look all right. It's uh, it's one of those things you could do two or three times, but you know I try to just keep it natural. Uh, thank you.